Welcome back to 1876 Sports and Culture Podcast, a show focused on highlighting the illustrious Prairie View A&M University, the HBCU of Texas, by promoting SWAC and the HBCU experience, featuring your fellow PV Panthers, Roland Austin, Jay Cleasy, Big Mike Washington, three-time SWAC champ Gati Werema, former drum major HBCU band historian Shanetta Haskell, and Al Williams, driving the show from the hill. Please subscribe and follow us on social media at 1876 SCP. And don't forget, we do it for the culture. And welcome to the 1876 Sports and Culture Podcast. We have with us today, Jay Cleasy, Big Mike, Shanetta. We got Gatti is on assignment, and so is Roland this week in Alabama. So uh, big weekend. I, 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 I want to just preface today's uh, discussion and say I'm, I'm, maybe I'm in my feelings or something, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of sour today, man. So Y'all have to excuse me if it sounds like I'm complaining too much, but uh, <laughs> I got some stuff I got to get off my mind, man. <laughs> hey, I would say I'm happy to be back, but golly, I was so depressed. I got on the flight five. I got to the airport five o'clock in the morning this morning to get my ass back home. See, <laughs> man. All right, let's let's start off. Let's start off with the gala. Now, I did enjoy the gala. Yes. It was good to see all of our folks. Everybody was dressed up, looking good, um, having a great conversations around the tables. And it, it felt like a, a dressed up homecoming. It was nice. You know, that's kind of what it felt like to me. It was like yeah. being at the tailgate, but everybody everybody is suited and booted. Yeah. That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was seeing pictures on uh, social media. I couldn't make it, unfortunately, but... And I was I was playing the game. That go, oh, that go, oh, that go, oh, that uh-huh. go. Everybody was all dressed up. I was like, oh, that go, oh. So yeah, it was. Don't want to get any names, but it looked like a lot of fun. It kind of made you want to be there. And and honestly, though, it actually started Thursday. So the Fort Worth alumni chapter. I said alumni. I'm thinking my sorority. The Fort Worth alumni chapter. Yo, she got to throw that. <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference. This is how we say it. <laughs> this is the I, not the AE. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the Fort Worth alumni chapter, as well as the Dallas and Missouri City chapters, actually had happy hours on Thursday. So it actually got started Thursday night. And so I I attended the event hosted by Missouri City and Dallas alumni. Um, very nice rooftop, green, really good vibe. But I saw pictures. Uh, for worse happy hour, it looks like they had a really good time as well. So, yeah, I think uh, that is one thing that that the Dallas alumni and and D, well, I'll say DFW mm-hmm. alumni chapters do a really good job of taking advantage of that State Fair Classic, and uh, it, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, attendance for this year's game fifty two thousand three hundred and eighty nine. That is the most attended HBCU game of the year thus far. So uh, Dallas, Dallas, we, we got, Dallas got something to say <laughs> in the words of our cast. <laughs> y'all got something to say. That's why I put it on my agenda to get to the gala, the gala every year going forward. Cause it was, yep. the venue was nice. They do it nice. The food was good. The entertainment was top notch off the chain. We had the marching storm, the drum line. And the major reds there as well, the black foxes. It, hey, I have a nice time every time, and everybody, like you said, suited and booted, but yet everybody's still down on earth, talking, having a good time. It, it was beautiful. Yeah, I, I tab, I tab that from now on to not leave to put that back in my calendar uh, to make it next year as well, Joe Cleasy. Both me and we were like, man, we should be there. You know, we trying to do this little anniversary thing, and we were like, can we get a flight in the morning? <laughs> All right. I, I got the table next year. I buy the table. Make sure y'all mm-hmm. come. I got the table. All right. Um, the one thing we need uh, some of these old heads to start sharing the, the etiquette and protocol when it comes to the agenda. You know, at a gala, once you invite us uh, Gen X and, and older generation to the dance floor, 
Don't tell us to sit back down. If you tell us to sit back down and these knees start locking up. We ain't getting back up. (laughs) We ain't getting back up. We ain't getting back up. (laughs) You know, so they got us going, had the wobble going, and uh, a couple of them little line dances, and then then said, okay, we need everybody to take their seats so we can do these awards. Like, wait, what? <laughs> so we we need to correct that uh, on next year's agenda. We need a, a protocol and etiquette uh, pamphlet to be sent out to the planners to ensure that uh, we we are decent and in order. <laughs> I think we do all of the talking, all of the speaking first. Yes, and turn it into a party. So I just want to give a shout out to Ferris Ferguson because he is the brainchild of changing the format, and I believe it was about 2018 or so where it was decided saying, hey, you know what? Those of us Gen X, we should be attending the gala. We now have the income that we should support it, right? And in 2019, I think it was maybe two or three tables. And so to see it 2019 and then to see it this past Friday night, just to see it grow. And I don't know if you all heard them when they talked about those in attendance. It was the majority of those in attendance was the classes of the 90s. So yeah. we can tell that. Really? It, mm-hmm. Interesting. Nice. And, and to nice. be honest with you, if we go back to that space, it's going to sell out. So at this point, even though they took it to a nicer venue, we were, you could barely hold us in there. All right. Like you walked wow. in and there were tables. So kudos again. I want to give just a shout out to Ferris Ferguson, the event chair. Definitely. Uh, Was that a bigger time. space from last year? Mm-hmm. Yes. What? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah, really nice, really nice setup. I like the fact that it was not buffet and we were served dinner. Yes. Uh, so that that's that's how we do a PV gala. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also want to recognize uh, Vernell Trigg. He bought a table, but uh, he took his wife to the Bahamas. So he 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 hit me up and said, "Hey, bro, I got oh, this Nate, table, man. Just get rid of these tickets." So uh, got to have. Uh, a lot of folks show up that uh, may not have been able to show up uh, based on that. So appreciate him. Um, and President LeGrand. Yes. I, yeah, I just got to huh? say, here's the thing. What you got? She understands the culture. Yeah. She knows when to give you Tamika and she knows when to give you <laughs> President LeGrand. Right. Yeah. So when she got up there to speak, she was... She came in, had her opening, made her three points, and took her seat. She wasn't up there more than five minutes. I'm like, see, that's that's when you understand the assignment. So yes. I, I I'm I'm telling you, man, I'm I'm liking the way this is going, bro. I'm not she had a good time too. She had a good yes. time because she was at the happy hour Thursday. See yeah. Thursday night, she, along with the AD and also uh Yant, the associate. So yeah. mm. and during her speech. He went in between being Tamika and Dr. Legrand during the speech. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. There's a there. There is something when you understand the governance structure of who we are to each other that you can weave and dodge and and, and but keep it keep it professional, but yeah. still connect. So yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. And I know I something like that lot. is dear to you all's heart is the fact that she gave her goals. And she put in her goals that she yep. wants every home game to feel like homecoming. Now, I don't know if she's experienced the PV homecoming yet. So I don't know if she really wants that, but I get where she's <laughs> I get where she's going. Right. So she did. She talked about needing to improve that game day experience. So I'm I'm, I'm all for that, it. That was the first time I've heard anyone of power speak about the game day experience and needing to improve it. I have not heard anyone else of authority speak about that. All mm-hmm. it is is just us, us alums complaining about it. But right. someone identified it and said, okay, we need to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the fact that she set the expectation out there and now you can do the planning to meet the expectation. Because a lot of times people call it strategic planning. What well, strategy and planning are two different things. Yep. You know, first you got to tell me where we're going and explain what that how that benefits us to get there. Then the planning is all the little tasks and things like that you do to make that happen. Mm-hmm. So, I'm glad she set it out there, set the expectation cuz now as folks have to make decisions, they can make a decision with that end goal in mind. Does this improve or does it hurt game day experience? So, I, I like 
that. Now, now I need golf. All right, bro. You're on the clock. Yeah. We're not, we, we need to know what you need, what you want, where we going. Because we got some questions. We got some questions. <laughs> but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, let's talk about um, the, the marketing that Dallas does for, for the PV game. Now, during the week, I heard it all on the radio stations. It was all on the news about the, the State Fair Classic. Um, I went to church. They were selling tickets at church. So there is a machine in Dallas that promotes PV better than I have experienced in Houston, which is the backyard. So what 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 do you see, Joe? Matter of fact, I saw I was on the elevator with brother Dr. Freddie Haynes. When you talk about church, he was at the game too. I walked yeah, on the elevator and I'm like, I felt like I was starstruck. I'm like, I wanted to take a picture, but I was like, chill out, bro. Hey man, he shoot the ice with you. <laughs> like, chill he out, shoot bro. the ice with you. <laughs> but hey, you talked about that 52,000 plus people at the game. That's part of the marketing. You yes. talking about selling out the gala. That's part of the Dallas marketing. And we just don't get that for like the Labor Day classic. In Houston. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I got it. Yeah, I got into a chat discussion. It was going back and forth. For whatever reason, we are 40 miles from Houston. You don't see this marketing anywhere in Houston. We made it to the swag championship. Do you know how much mention that it got on the local news? This much. We are four hours from Dallas. You see, at any big event, you're gonna see purple and gold on some of the buildings. You don't see it at every you're gonna hear it on every station over and over and over. For whatever reason, maybe we try to, and the big question is why? Maybe it's because you got TSU there or whatever. They haven't done much or whatever, but half the students come from either Dallas or, or or Houston. So you would think that there would be more of a marketing machine in Houston, but there's just not. We And even the alumni chapters, there's a big difference. It's I different, hate to say yeah. Between what the North Houston chapter does and what's done in Dallas and the Fort Worth chapter. But you saw it this weekend, and we were like, wow. It's, it's a big difference. And I think it's a cultural deal. I think blackness is celebrated more in Dallas than in Houston. I could be completely really? off base, mm -hmm. but to me, outsider, that's what I see. I think I think living here, um, it is a it's the all we have, right? That is the biggest black event that comes to Dallas. So we talk about the game, we didn't even talk about how the organizations that are all have houses on Martin Luther King, which leads to the fair, the whole, we didn't even talk about what's happening outside of the game, right? Mm -hmm. On Martin Luther King. So I think that's what it is. It's, it's cause I've always known that game. It's, it's, it's been big since forever, all of my life. Right. And so I, I, I wonder too, but sometimes I do think that that's maybe does Houston get, too much do you all have a lot of festivals or gang like are there other things that mm. blacks can look forward to whereas in dallas we look forward to this weekend and it's the only weekend truly i would say that again you're gonna get that many black people folk you know just all in on this one event this one series of events i should say yeah yeah, and I I, mean, who's promoting it? I mean, so this this Al Wash promotes this game, right? So are we are we leaving the promotion in Houston to a a, a, a promotion company? Like that's that's his business. That's, that's question. Business. I don't so. know. That's a good question. I, I don't know who is in charge of the promotion in Houston. Mm -hmm. Is it the, uh, left up to the schools? I, I it's definitely not an external promoter like it is in Dallas. That is, uh, I believe that is definitely the case. And that may be part of it. Prayer View and TSU yeah. are not good at promoting themselves. I think we know that. We've discussed that before. And after yeah. it too, and I'll say this too, I mean, Al Wash graduated from Prayer View, so he wants this to be a success. No. So. Yeah, I 100% I agree. I think um, there are some additional opportunities that we have when it comes to branding at this game. Um, you know, inside the stadium, there were a lot of vendors. Um, you could buy paraphernalia and things like that. Um, and then down Martin Luther King, of course, Percy, uh, consistent. You know, if you look throughout the crowd, anybody that has on PV stuff, at least 50% are going to have on Percy's gear. I got on Percy's gear today. So um, Percy 
also PV alum, has some skin in this game. I think there's some opportunities where we can leverage some of this experience to help with this branding initiative. Uh, I know uh, our new AD said, you know, we need to work on our our branding. Um, We don't need to start from scratch. You got some folks that have been doing this a long time and know what they're doing, have built a brand around it and are willing to help. So (laughs) I think if we just leverage some of the some of the contacts we have, it's not going to cost us any money. Um, yeah. But get some folks who who have more than money in the game. Yeah. Yep, that I boy agree. Percy That's was more, clean Friday night too. <laughs> you saw that boy's shoes, man. I, I, I parked I parked in the same garage with Percy, and I saw the shoes before I knew it was Percy. Them bad boys was gleaming. Tammy was like, "All right, then." Y'all doing it like that? <laughs> can we get Pastor like Haynes to say? Can we get Pastor Haynes to say a prayer, opening game prayer, hey. like, the, like they did at Jackson State? You remember that, Joe? I didn't oh. think about that. Man, can we get that? Pastor be- Haynes? <laughs> Hey, that would be worth, you know how they pay the guy talking about let's get ready to rumble? Let's yeah, exactly. get Pastor Haynes to show up and give us the, the invocation for every game. How about what that? that? I mean, what would that? I can't call it. Oh, boy. <laughs> he gave the invitation. He always gives up. I, I, I don't know. I didn't go to the Jackson State game or didn't hear it, but he always gives the invocation for the Soul Bowl, as he calls it. Yeah. Wow. Yes. He don't miss, man. <laughs> I, I get that every Sunday, so I, I'm spoiled. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, now, did you guys go to the tailgating? I enjoyed that tailgate experience. Yeah. It was a little warm out. But, you know, all the all the Greek letter organizations had tents and, you know, set up in front of their houses. Now, the Alpha House is a couple blocks over, so we rented a space over there on the corner. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like pre-homecoming. I don't know another way to say it. <laughs> you can't see that anywhere else in the state of Texas. No. 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 You cannot. That is true. And that's one thing I think maybe we're missing at the Labor Day Classic. Yes. I know it's August, but or early September, but still we don't have that tailgating experience. There are signs up, no tailgating. So uh, I I think that's a piece that gets missed. Now, there are some consequences for that. I know there was a lady sitting three seats down from me that passed out, and Tammy had to put on on her uh, Dr. Williams. uh, (laughs) She she gave me it, and she was like, you call 911, (laughs) and let me see what I can do with this lady. Hey, but there's there are four or five in our that. section that 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 Dallas Fire and Rescue had to come get. Mm-hmm. That, that's gonna mm-hmm. happen. It's hot. People drink. They old. Yeah. <laughs> that's going. <laughs> that's what I wasn't gonna go with that one, but like, <laughs> that's a hell of a combination. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's let's talk about this concert pianist at PV. Did did y'all hear about that this week? Yeah. Uh, I thought that was, I th- thought that was unique. The the university, as we know it, um, the fine arts department is presenting Doctor presents Doctor Gustavo Romero, and I didn't know who he was. And I started listening to some of his stuff. He was with the Philharmonic. He was Ooh. with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the New York Philharmonic, the Los Angeles Philharmonic, and the Atlanta Symphony. Well, so he's been invited to uh, Prairie View A and M's State of the Art Performance Hall. In Hobart, Texas, I guess, and uh, I thought it uh, unique that they're inviting such a talent. Number two, it is in the middle of Hispanic Heritage Month, so a tremendous talent. But I think it, it kind of is a step in the in, in the in the more diversity realm for the arts and science group. So, uh, dude is bad. Uh, if you ever get a chance, check out some of his pieces. I don't know if you into that thing, but. Dude has some nice stuff. So Prairie Prairie View's uh, honored to have him. I think it's like the fifth of October. But nice, nice, nice little invite for Prairie View and M. Got to be cultured. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, Maddie Jordan, Maddie Jordan, what a story! Mm-hmm. What a story! Never yeah. too late to finish. You hear about that one? I, I yeah. didn't hear that. What, what, Break it down for me. I heard that one. Yeah, Maddie. So Maddie is from Hempstead, Texas. So um, she actually enrolled in Prairie View in the, I think, in the late eighties. And you know, I'll kind, of, I'll kind of give you the Cliff Notes version, but I, her story touched me because it's taken her, you know, over you know thirty plus years to get her degree. 
But in the midst, she and her kids have been in a car wreck. She lost her job. She worked for the Prairie View A&M procurement uh, group. She went through a series of layoffs, started back working. Then when her kid got sick, COVID, you know, right around COVID, you know, there was a loss of nurses. So she really had to stop school, almost start working to help take her, her take care of her family. So lo and behold, you know, here it is, the year our Lord, December 2022, she, through perseverance and lots of trials and tribulations, she finally got her degree. So she, I mean, she has a 30-year-old daughter and a 25-year-old son. She's a grandmother, and but she still persevered, you know, and she, you know, gives testimony that I prayed to God that if it wasn't, I mean, but she's gone through all, if there's anybody who's gone through trials and tribulations, it's been her and stuck with it and got her degree and hats off to Prairie View for kind of a lot, you know, you know, kind of shining the light on her. She's like, I didn't get it done. I didn't get it done in one year, two year, three years, but through God, I was able to get it done. So that kind of blessed me you know, that she gave glory to God. And here she is a grandmother and all of that, gone through all the trials and tribulations and has her preview degree. It's something she said, I always dreamed of. So uh, that's kind of, so you read it, it's very touching. Mm, okay. That was the cliff notes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amazing story amazing story oh, yeah <laughs> did, did y'all last thing did y'all hear the dj playing in the end zone during the third and fourth quarter was that not just me did y'all hear the whole concert going on in the end zone yeah yeah yeah, yeah i could hear the bass i couldn't hear uh what they were saying i looked down there and you know, they had the, the high schoolers were down in that end zone. So whoever it was, the high schoolers knew who it was and knew the song because they would start chanting and singing the song. And it drew all of our attention. Like, what is going on down there? But, yeah, they they didn't stop during plays. Or there was no no etiquette to that whatsoever. It was a full concert during the heat of the potential comeback. In the third and fourth quarter, yeah. and the refs didn't say anything. I was gonna say the refs didn't come in and say, "Please stop playing." No, not they the did that to the band. Yeah. The band. I'm like, yeah. what the hell is going on? Where am I? I I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was I'm looking at the people around me, and I'm like, y'all don't realize that this is some foolishness going on right here. They got a full blown concert going on in the end zone during. The game. I, I I think they just chalked up to uh, give the people what they want. And yep, uh, yep. those high schoolers, you know, they have a short attention span. But if you can get them in some call and response, yep. uh, you know how to do that. <laughs> so, Don't get them in call and response one way or the other. That's right. Because we, they weren't getting it from the band. No. But that, I digress. Let me, let me, let me, let me bag. Usa. All right. Let's take a break and come back and talk some football. Second and five. First, the ball up the middle and breaks free. The 20, the 10. Touchdown, Prairie View. And it is Tristan Wallace. All right, so Mike, a lot of data points here in this game, man. A lot of data points. And um, let's start off with uh, with that 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 offensive Grambling. <laughs> Mike just curled his lips. Yeah, you, 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 uh, you, that offensive ground, and you mean that one that amassed a total of 450 yards total against the Prairie View defense of oh, the number two or three ranked Prairie View? You mean that, that offense from – or, or, or do you mean Holly who went two for 20, two for 41, had 250 yards, two TDs? You mean that offense against uh, – That yeah. one. That that one. Right I didn't there. see the time of. Yeah, I didn't see the time of possession stat, but no, it felt it was, like they had the ball seventy five percent of the game. But wait, not so fast. You mean they had the ball for thirty eight minutes and twelve seconds? Let's just round it up to a cool forty minutes. Prairie View had the Ooh, ball twenty minutes, so they had the ball twice as long as Prairie View. I think this though, people just forget, let that soak for a second. People forget Hugh Jackson's resume. 
at one point he had the top offense in the NFL as the as offensive coordinator. It ain't like this man forgot how to coach football just because he had a bad couple of years in Cleveland with no talent and no support from the uh, the, the front office. The man kind of knows how to coach offense. That's all I'm saying. It was a matter of time before he was going to put points up at Home Preview. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I kind of wondered, though, as I was kind of looking, couldn't look at the whole thing. You know, Gramlin had like five rushes. They had about six receivers with catches for 250 yards alone. Lyndon Rash, Javon Robinson, uh, both had seven catches for 73, 69 yards. And throw. how did our secondary look against these guys? Oh, we, I didn't even want to talk about it, but since you brought it up. <laughs> yes, I did. I had to. It's necessary. Bro, our DBs, they got problems, man. I hate to, I hate to name a name, but I, I, the same cat, the same player who had, who's been having issues all, all season, Freddie Bird is having problems out there transitioning i guess from juco to d1 football because he getting toasted on a regular and the coaching staff gotta do something they playing these kids are the corners are playing 10 yards off and they st- even 10 yards off they still going in a back pedal when the ball snapped the receiver oh, got the receiver got a free release he going wherever he want to go I guess we're afraid to run to play bump and run. You need to play up on these cats. Don't give them free release to go wherever we, you want to go, and then you just in pr- pursuit mode the whole time. The secondary has got to do better. They've got they need to change up some schemes, something. The quarterback got all day to throw. Ain't no pass rush. We don't at run all. any blitz schemes at <laughs> all. The DNs are not crashing down. They we got we got Trey Green. He run a legit 4 4 40. Send him on a blitz. Yeah. Dewan Lewis, he has pass rush capabilities from the safety position. Send him on a blitz like a, a honey badger role that we had. We had Dino play a couple years ago. We need it. We cannot just let the quarterback sit back there because you know your DBs are, are suspect. They, they cannot cover all day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, another data point that sticks out our efficiency. We were over a million on fourth down. Okay, we don't go on fourth down that much. We were three for 12. That's less than 30%. That is not going to get it. That tells me we were not efficient at all on offense. Some of that may be the quarterback. Some of that may be, but a lot of that is 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 the plays we were running. We just, just based on the stats, we were not efficient. Hey, that was the O-line. O-line was getting yeah. manhandled. We had one player that was, yeah. he, was he had an ankle injury. He may not have been able to, should not have been out there, but I guess that speaks to the depth of the O-line, but that was the O-line. Connolly didn't have time to throw the ball. It is what it is. And then their best linebacker, I'm sorry, he misses three quarters, comes back in, and makes the play of the game. And make the play. Made the play of the game. He was stressed, and he came in. Once he came in, I I think he had maybe three consecutive sacks, if I'm not mistaken. He's not tired. I'm like, that's not a punishment. That's not a punishment for Graham. I agree. So that, that is not a button. You rest the dude. I'll come in. Y'all let me know when it's time for me to come in. <laughs> like, he chilling. Yes. I'm like, oh. I said, I'd we, rather we, give the opposing team a choice. He can play for the first and sit the last three or mm-hmm. sit the first three and play for the fourth. I, I want yeah. to play the first and be sit the rest of the game. Yeah. But but the problem is we only had a total of a, we only had 126 rushing yards without that's without their top tackler in the game. Yep. yep. God, I'm, yeah. I'm amazed at that because it just seems like he, he kept running into a brick wall. I'm like, stop trying that. It's not working, coach. It's not yeah. working. I, I want to say maybe 80 of those yards were on big plays. Yeah. So on first down, if we looked at first down efficiency, when we do that, uh, that run pass option on first down, there was rarely positive yardage on that first down which put you in second and long, and then we would try and run it again. And then in third and long, everybody knows what you're going to do, so they they rush three. Uh, so the times where they were not as predictable were when we had those big plays. I wish that, you know, and I don't – I just watch football. I don't know the lingo. I wish that 
the receivers did not have to wait on Trayvon Fall because yes. it's two touchdowns I think we would have had if he didn't have to wait. He was all by himself. But as he's waiting, the opponent has plenty of time to run to him. To recover, yeah. So yeah. The, we, the we just have not – yeah, we have not seen that quarterback receiver connection. Yeah, this season that we were hoping that would would improve, um, it just ain't there. I mean, we got time. The house isn't completely burnt down. You know, we PV. Oh, we just yeah, like yeah. To- it's, yeah, the f- this, the fuse is just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all yeah. know we can't do this thing easy. We had to make it a situation where we got to go into Baton Rouge and win that game. Yeah, yeah. And now we got to go to Baton Rouge and win. And then we got to root for them. Exactly. Oh, now oh, we got to oh, root for them to beat. Yeah. Yeah, we got to root for Southern to beat Graham at at, at Bayou. Bayou. Uh, but right now, Graham, they uh they they control their own destiny in the SWAC West. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, based on the way that offense is rolling, man, I yeah. And you can't. I got a feeling you're gonna see Graham in the championship game. And you're gonna. We're going to FAMU for their homecoming. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. And, and <laughs> hey, and if you've been watching Fam, you know it's gonna be tight. Yeah. They've been stacking talent for the last two, three years, man. They got big boys, and since we have a lack of depth on a D line, and and a lack of size. It's gonna be a long day in the trenches, but hey, that's a couple weeks away. We ain't gotta worry about that just yet. Yeah, but yeah, we 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 become Southern and Alcorn State fans because Southern has to go to Alcorn, so and we beat Alcorn. But that, like I said, like Joe said, that's a little down the ways. All hopes not lost. We'll see. Mm. Yeah, but I tell you what, we can't do. We can't give up twenty five first downs again. Can't yeah. do that. No, I mean we need to put a little tweet about these 10, 15 yard cushions as well. That's that's just giving that's easy money. It's but easy you know, I, I I'm a hey, I, I never want to come on here and act like I know more than the coaching staff. So I'm assuming that they know the talent they have cannot play bump and run coverage. So then at that point, we got to change to some type of zone, something. But exactly. these corners ain't getting it done. Yeah, but that that works if you have a pass rush. Right, we don't have the pass rush. Right, that's so. If we had somebody blitzing, you know, whatever it takes, doing stunts, whatever, maybe that could help. You know, whatever. Like I said, I I don't know coaching, but if you're giving 10 15 yards, that's too much time. Yeah, because they picked us off with those little five and six yard passes. Yeah, um, and then on, on third and three, they could run the ball. Yeah. Easy money. So yeah, I think there's there's a lot of things. There were some there were some questionable moves that uh, that I that I observed. Like if you're down nine points, uh, two minutes to go, no timeouts. Why would you run the ball in the middle of the field? Exactly. That just didn't make any sense to me. So there were some 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 clock management errors that to me. The coaching staff owes it to these players to be on top of. You got to have some situational awareness um, if that's what you expect from your players. You've also got to have that from a coaching staff. So I, I, I hope we can get it together. Um, you know, there is some talent on this team. We saw it last week against Alcorn. So I, I guess we can chalk this up like uh, the, the that latest Usher song. We ain't good, good, but we still good. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> we're gonna chalk it up to that and let's let's you know what we're doing next week mike yeah we talking about valley talk about valley talk hey. we better not be talking about valley put it on us either that's what we better not be talking about hey word is valley bringing the band yeah that's what i heard they're bringing the band so valley ain't coming to play you yeah. know you know hey, who man. i hope don't come i hope them damn officials that we had don't come because that was atrocious the calls they made or did not make yeah what the hell can we get dr mcclellan to review this tape and give out some pink clips or something 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 all right let's take a quick break and come back and talk some band All 
right, Shanetta. I think all season we were kind of thinking, well, maybe they're just holding back and they're going to bring it out in Dallas. You know, they, they, they don't want to give up. They don't want to give up the game too soon. Uh, but I kind of left the game wanting. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way of putting it. So yeah. maybe maybe that's how I'll approach this segment. What I wanted. Thanks. <laughs> yes. Let what me I, hear your list because I got a list too. <laughs> Number what, one. I, what, I, what I wanted was the drum majors to do something, do a come out, like start this show and just the five of you set that tone, like a drum major come out. Um, We had... We had a drum feature, but I was confused when it ended. Like they got into this perfect straight line. I'm like, oh man, maybe they're about to, you know, back in the day how they would play on each other's drum or, and yeah. then it, they, 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 they just, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. So I wish there was, there was a nice buildup to, what was that song back in the day? Pow, bam, boom, nothing. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, that's so, um, I think I think this Ooh. game would have been the eye of the storm would have been nice to see. Yeah, uh, I'm right there with you. you yes. Know, all so far, I've talked about the tempo and I like the tempo, but they they lost me a bit with the dance. Um, I and this is just personal preference. I think I think you get nasty and you come off. They got nasty and I was I was feeling the slow portion of the dance and then that's when you should come off then they yep. spit it up i'm like what 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 i, uh, I don't mm-hmm. know and then when you came off you know you you tempt i mean i i liked when they came off and they was they the sideline blow down like that would have been a perfect opportunity to play swamp because you had not played it right um i was yelling it from from section eight yeah so, I mean, especially when you know Grambling's hallmark is to yeah. come off the field with GSU Rocks the House. Okay, I will see your GSU Rocks the House and I will raise you a swamp. Now, yeah. To me, this is chess, not checkers, baby. Come on. It's like they got, the, they have little things on these on the whiteboard and they just move them around. And But we're going to do a drum feature and we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And then they scramble it up like the Soul Train board and do it in an order that comes across as disjointed. Yeah. I, so I I'm, come on, Doc, Dr. Zach. I, I, hey, somebody got to hurt his feelings or something because <laughs> exactly. he, ain't, he ain't hitting it like he, you know, we need some married. I, thought, I, I actually so thought. I didn't get no P-Funk. No, I didn't people. get the swamp. I'm like, I was like, yeah, my soul and the barbecue sauce like Vixen. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, had several something. opportunities to get people going with that people. I was like, no people. So, you know, yeah. I think we, go ahead, Jeff. If you don't play P funk, you yeah. are ostracizing everybody over 45 for certain. Yeah, well, that's the main thing they know. I think thing. too. That's a good point because I was sitting there and I was thinking. We, we talk about, like, I am now convinced as far as the band understanding their role at the game. I'm, I'm convinced that I would say that the majority of the people at the game is Gen X and older. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay? The majority yep. of the people at the game, Gen X and older. And so when you have Grambling on the field, and as corny as I want to dance with somebody is, like that was not one of my favorite Whitney songs. The crowd got into it because the crowd knew the song. That's right. And when they play Jodeci's Come and Talk to Me, the crowd got into it because the crowd knows the song. Mm-hmm. Um, I from, let, me, let me say this about Grambling. I'm still going to. The reason I'm going to give Grambling halftime is because Grambling gave the people what they want. Yep. That's right. Um, now, one thing I didn't like about Grambling, how they started, they typically go off with that GS, GS. They started playing the way JSU stars, JSU rocks the house. I don't like that, right? That's how they started it. Then they went into their GSU, right? So uh, I didn't really like that part. But that signature move that always gets housed for them, they did it. 
And I'm just like, this This is not rocket science. It's, it's, it's simply people have told you simply by their cheers what we like. It is almost like you just refuse to do it. Refuse. Light of a bumblebee. Yeah. And then yeah, light of the bumblebee. It's, it's one thing I noticed last night too is anytime there's a score, whether it's a, a field goal or a touchdown, you know there's about to be some uh, opportune time for you to play. Yes. Every time. And I'm just either either grandma started playing or there was silence. Yep. I was like, come on. I I, I think I text. Man, that's a perfect opportunity for people right there. Right there. Yeah. When they scored, you talking about momentum changer right, right there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. I think like they played I'm So Glad, which is cool, but that's more of a song that I would play toward the end of the song when I'm winning the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when we need our defense. Um, Just hit the I boom, boom. Boom. Yeah. 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 Yes. You know what? We never do that. I yeah. never thought about that before. But just this little, I mean, I'm thinking about things we used to do in high school. High school. Yeah, right? that's a high school move. Hold yeah. that line, Cowboys. Call the Cowboys. Shout out to Call the Cowboys. Hold that line, Cowboys. Oh, Hold that line. That's <laughs> that's <you know>, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, I, I think that is why I just continue to be frustrated because I know the things that they can do. Right. And yeah. I do. I think I yeah. the story would have been perfect yesterday. I mean, these jokers, you know, Gremlin comes out and puts the area code. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. simple. The area. <laughs> something that simple. Get like I said, we don't want much, but you know, yeah, and it's real simple brother. creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Feed our soul yeah. with some P funk. <laughs> yeah. And and you can you can say what you want. Gremlin took two pages out of JSU's book. The way they started off, and they come and talk to me. Jackson State did that at the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. and had the whole crowd rocking. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know what? To be honest with you, uh, thank you, Gremlin, because my first performance as a freshman at PV was the drill number was "Give You My Heart" by Babyface, and that's what Gremlin played. Yep. Please. And so <laughs> that girl bad. That girl cold, ain't she? Yeah. <laughs> hey, and you know. Prairie View is the adopted home of Frankie Beverly and Mays. I want to say the three of the four years I was at PV, Frankie Beverly and Mays did homecoming. Yeah, that was a so, rotation. Bruh, just yeah. hit it. We we know every you can pick any song. Yeah. We we got your back. We will you yeah. could you know how the choir does where they, they cut the music and let everybody just sing. We right there with you. We got your back. Come on, and I, baby. <laughs> And even when I think about, like, when we were at PV, right, in the 90s, we were playing Earth, Wind, and Fire. They didn't have any new songs. No. No. Songs in 1995. But right. Maze, no new songs. No new songs. And, and, no new songs. and the songs that we did play back then were full, right? Patti LaBelle put out a right kind of love. It was a full song. Portrait, here we go, is a full song. So when, when I you think say about, full for huh? us basic folks, when you say full, what do you mean? Oh, just the musicality. There's 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 something for every instrument to play. Yeah. It's a full song versus rap music, where really it's just a bass line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a yep. bass line, bass line and chords. That's all you're gonna have. And that's pretty much what took up the fifth quarter. Neither band did, neither band was just open. I shouldn't say neither. Both bands were okay. If I had to give it someone, I'm going to give it to Prairie View because I went to Prairie View. But both bands' arrangements weren't all that great. A lot of rap music. Um, that will not That will not work. I don't know if we're going to Southern. That's not going to work. Grambling just let you know get, get, that's not going to work against Southern. Yeah, I, don't know if was, I don't know if it's a TV angle, but they showed halftime show Prairie View. And it looked like the drum line started out in a straight line. And then they messed up Pythagorean because that line bended. Yeah. And started. I, get, I was like, what are they doing? I didn't get some of their designs. I think they were just making, I think that they were making room for the black boxes. Okay. So, again, I'm not sure. 
And I, yeah, and I've never been because to be honest with you, I didn't really care much for the formations we made. Um, <laughs> so I don't I don't get into the formation talk. I, yeah, but yeah, we made up even if you didn't know what we were making, we made up for it by the time we came off that field. Um, so I got a question. Yeah. Has rap music destroyed the band halftime show? You might be on to something there. Because these kids don't, you know, back when you used to buy CDs or buy albums, you would listen to the whole album. So you would hear songs that you wouldn't hear on the radio. Nowadays, these kids, their their playlists are, are curated for them. Yep. So they only hear what mass media wants them to hear. That's why all of them know the same songs. You play right. something deep on any album of any artist that they have, they may not recognize it because they haven't heard that. They, you know, they download music by song or you listen to Pandora and it just gives you what your your tastes are. You yep. don't hear anything new. So a lot of these kids, unless they, you know, have grandmama around that, that you know, will play some of that stuff, they don't know it. Yep. I think, the, I think the second half of the dance routine has always been rap, even back in the day. It's always mm -hmm. been the rap. It was the baseline, which is why the tubas never put their horns down and we would dance to again that's the second half um your drill number typically is going to be it'll be an r&b tune i haven't seen many bands try and do a drill number and when i say a drill number what they're when they the first thing they do right after entertainment tonight where they're doing the formations a lot of times it's an r&b song and a lot of times it will be something um, i know they were doing usher they did usher uh yesterday so mm. Like I said, I mean, I did walk away wanting more. I did think they may have been holding back. I think that what they oh, did. Because they're not going to fam. I was told they ain't going to fam. So what they holding back for? Homecoming? Well, this was the biggest crowd that they had. And so, um, so far. Yeah. So, but I thought, I thought what they did for Texas Southern and what they did against Abilene Christian, I think would have been better. Than what was done for Grandma. Another yep. observation: I saw some yellow plumes. I saw some white and purple plumes. Are we short plumes, and do we need to pass the hat? <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> That's a good question because I like you in the uniformity. If you're gonna yeah, get purple, too, I want all purple plumes. Yeah, and if you're gonna mix, mix, mix and match them. Give all the one color to one section. Give all the tubas, tubas. yeah, yellow. Yeah, tubas like the that. yellow or the, the drums, drums yellow, but yeah. they were like sp sprinkled in there. M must have been by you know crabs or yellow or something. I don't know, <laughs> but it, it, oh, it drew you, my attention. You could have done if you're gonna do different colors for whatever reason. You could do every other person so it looks a little bit uniform. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I, 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 I I will say this. It it sounded it was it was very noisy. I do like that when the game first started, they were just going at it. You know, because yes. a lot of times we'll wait for the other band to stop. They were going and that's noisy. And I really thought they were setting a tone there, like okay, die <laughs> down. And again, it's 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 just hard for me. I know a lot of people say, well, when we started losing. Is that just doesn't? I, I was there when we didn't win anything, and and we right <laughs> going. We played still. Yeah, the band kept you there. Like I, I okay, I'm, I'm waiting for this chant. I'm waiting for that, and it was participatory. Yeah, but I didn't feel like I was a part of it. They yeah. didn't. They didn't make me feel like I was a part uh, that I, you know, had a role to play. That's what I want the band to do. Give me a role to play, and I'm gonna play it. You know, whether it's the oh, oh, swap, you know, get, we, we tell so me simple. what you want me to do, and I got you. Yeah, yeah. We we so simple. If yeah. all they had to do was play P Funk in a day, and we exactly. were good, we was like, okay, I could go home now because I'm yep. happy. Yep, that be so <laughs> simple. And now, if you play the swamp and P Funk, we good. We is oh, happy. Yeah. Like yeah. A big, big, I, I do. I still think right. they. They're, they're playing to Gen Z, and Gen yeah. Z is not the majority. Gen, Gen Z don't give a damn. They, yeah. They, the, the, the ones I know, I call you going to the game. We got a game. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you in your room watching Alabama, you know your team has me having a game today. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. 
Damn, you know what? So the the show is being designed for a fan base that don't even go to the games. Yep. The, yeah, and I, again, I'm sure it's there's the some students there, but there are more Gen X and older at the game. Yeah, I I agree for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back right back with the We Ready shoutouts. <laughs> See that swamp never misses. That swamp <laughs> never misses. I'm sitting here right now, like, yeah, that's what I needed I, yesterday. <laughs> that's why I listen to it on the way to work. Just, right. just the intro. Exactly. Yeah. So uh I have to retract a We Ready shout out from last week where I was mistaken. I granted a We Ready shout out to uh kicker Villa Gomez, but it was actually Guillermo Go Go uh Rodriguez that that kicked the game winner last week. So I am retracting a We Ready and retroactively uh, granting Go-Go the We Ready shout out for this week. <laughs> that boy, Yo, Adam, no. the whole show got fact checked. Yes. All of PD Nation was fact checking. Like, y'all don't even watch CNN like that, but y'all want to exactly. fact check. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> I, I got two shout outs i got one reggie stubblefield class of what when, when did reggie graduate i think what two 22 22 uh, pv, PV yeah. alum um swag uh all swag db transferred that did his last grad season at kansas state anyway he's at he's in the cfl now he tried yeah. out for the he got hurt when he first left kansas state he tried out for the CFL uh, preseason. He thought he made the team. He got cut. Anyway, right before the season started, three DBs went down. They bought Reggie Stubblefield back. He started, came in, kick and tail, got newcomer of the week, uh, rookie of the week, DB of the week, whatever. He done got it a couple times now. Now he's a star in Montreal. The whole city mm-hmm. love him. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? <laughs> Not as good. All the, time. Around, all the time. That's around to get defensive rookie of the year. So yeah. shout out to Reggie Stubblefield, that boy product of the Arlington, Texas area. He was ready. Always ready. Yeah. Always, Always ready. ready. <laughs> then I got one more. I got one more. We talk about how the youngsters don't, when they roll up on us, they don't talk to us. Anyway, we were sitting next to two young ladies. We were sitting down, me and V-Loves. Two young ladies came, sat by us. They end up being engineering majors. One was a junior, double E engineering major. Um, N- Nalia Skipper. Baby girl was like, say, her. man. You know it's Bro, I recruited Lovely. her. I got her coming in next summer to, to Toyota, baby. I'm already on it. What? Okay. <laughs> yes. She say she say she needs some scholarships. She needs some scholarship money. So I said, she said, can y'all tell PV Nation I need some scholarship money, please? I said, all right, I give her a shout out. I appreciate her being bold enough to, to ask, but she already locked in. So anyway. Hey, she I is solid, her. man. Uh, you know, I interviewed her when she was a freshman. I gave her some instructions on what I needed her to do. She did it. That's why I got her, man. I, I saw her at the Thurgood Marshall College Fund pitch competition at Winston-Salem State. Probably that was in May. So, uh, yeah, she's on it. She's on yeah, it. Well, then she ready already. She, she ready. ready. She ready, ready. All right. I'm giving a shout out to guess. Don't look now. But guess what? Volley t- volleyball team is leading the swag and in first place. Wait for it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait for it. Wait for it. At three and zero, oh, Prairie View has, is on a three-game winning streak, beating Jeez. Pine Bluff, Grambling, and Alcorn um, earlier today. So guess what? Guess who's in first place? Yes, Yo Lady Panthers. That's not the real. Uh, we ready? The we ready is. Guess who's number two in the swag in kills? Kylie Uh-oh. Owens. Kylie <laughs> Owens. Kylie Once Owens. again. <laughs> Once again, number two in the swag. She's murder. <laughs> she is murder. <laughs> she is killing them. <laughs> hey, that girl was born ready. Hey, murder now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's her new nickname, K-Murder. K-Murder. Kill, kill. <laughs> 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 
Let's put that All out. right, that's gonna stick. That's gonna stick. Oh, All right. Anybody else got one before we hash another take us out of here? All right, let's let's go. Cause uh last week ain't go so hot. So let's see it, what we got. No, nah, it didn't go well at all. It was it I'm was glad like, I wasn't a part of that fool. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't blame your ass last week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. P V. You, you know. All right, I'm not not that bad. All right, roll the credits, baby. Roll right. the credits. Wait, oh, man. The bad boys, yeah. bad boys. What you gonna do? <laughs> we gonna.